welcome to Nail Me. My name is Lisa Graves and that's my model going in the Trima room. <laughs> in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a lovely 3D bow and an encapsulated Christmas bauble nail. Enjoy guys. <laughs> Right, okay, so I'm coming in with cobalt. So I've already got my tip on, I've blended it. Um, obviously I've shaped and filed it as well. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, I've done my prime and prep, my prep and prime rather. And then I've done my clear, clear thin base. So I'm gonna come in with the cobalt now. Just using this for color. I'm going to keep this nice and thin and you know how I feel about these shimmer acrylics. They're so nice to work with and they just, oh, just I, don't know. I hope there was a lid on that. Knocking paints off the desk again. This blue is just so much yes. There we go. So just full coverage for that. I'm just going to give that a couple of minutes to set and then we'll get this capped in clear. And that's where I'm going to put my strength and structure in. So if I was clear acrylic, oh my God. Yes, there was a lid on it. <laughs> I've got like the biggest desk ever and still I'm knocking stuff off. It's because my elbows, I'm all elbows. I knocked my black acrylic no. the other day. I did. It didn't have the lid on. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. I only spilt a little bit of it because it actually landed on the base. Oh god! Because I was just about to use. It. I was just about to do some filming. I was filming these actually. Um, I was literally just about to start and oh, knocked it off on my elbow. I was like, no! <laughs> <laughs> well, I need some more monomer. Um, should mention I am using the medium speed monomer for this. If you are using the other monomer, obviously you don't need to use your bonder because it has a built-in primer. Right, so I'm just going to completely cap this just in clear and start popping in my, my shape and my structure, make sure that my apex is in. Oh, I'm so not in shot. There we go. Sorry. My bad. Well, I'm the one looking at the screen. I should know where your end should be. Can I just say, I am loving these pastel sparklies. I do love a good pastel Christmas set. Pastel winter. Anything with pastels and snowflakes and baubles just, just makes me happy, Sam. Well, you know I love a good bauble. Not your new coat, is it? Yeah, he's just chewing his ball on it. He's fine. He's fine. Okay, so make sure your apex is in with this clear. And blend the rest of that bead down. I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> you have so sad eyes. But no, you're not. Can, can you stop? Keep putting that ball all over me. I just want to say she is talking to Lando, not me. <laughs> Not you too. <laughs> right, I'm going to give this a couple of minutes to set and then we can get it filed up. Right, so let's get the base down for one's this One's going to be now. a bauble and one was going to be a present, wasn't it? Yeah, so I'm doing the present on this one and the bauble on that one. Right, so I'm going to be using pink steel again. So this is just going to keep, keep in theme with the previous video that we did. So I'm going to use pink steel and then a bit of frosty as well. So... 
I'm back in with my medium monomer and my A8 brush. So just like what I did with the blue, I'm going to do full nail with pink steel. This one's so beautiful. And it's definitely more pink when it's on the nail, isn't it? It looks mm. really, really white in the pot. But it's a lovely pastel pink. nice and carefully around your cuticle like I said we're just adding this for colour so you want enough thickness to get the colour but we don't want it too thick a little bit up in this top corner and then just make sure that you're blending those beads together I think I just need a little bit more just on this tip. Looks slightly see through. On the might need a little bit as well. Just here, yeah. Okay, right, so that's nearly set. We'll give this a couple of minutes and then we need to get that capped in clear as well. Change of plan. I'm bringing my frosty back in. I was going to add this on top, but actually I'm going to add it straight onto the pink. So just a bead of this. And I'm going to pop this. In a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle because we are going to be drawing on top of it as well. But I can start forming this. And make sure this is in your apex area because this is going to add a bit of thickness to the nail and try and keep it almost circular so if you look at the thickness from the side it's not it's not a massive dome you've got enough on there to get the iridescence that we want and then that will be disguised nicely under our apex so let's get this capped in clear then So much nicer being in the new studio, isn't it? Oh, it is. Instead of working in, in the living room. room. Move. Well, I say room to move, but then I keep knocking yeah. stuff off and I'm, my camera's all over the place. I think that's because we were doing a photo shoot earlier on and I think we just weren't properly organised. <sighs> Are we ever organised? Well, sometimes. Not... <sighs> No. <laughs> I like to think that the level of chaos we've experienced in the house. I used to think it was because I was working in my house, but no, it's it's just me. Just me. Right, so capping this frosty section only needs to be thin on top. And they need a thin bit on the actual top of it, but just make sure you cap the pink steel either side and make up that thickness. And same around the cuticle area. There we go. Right, so what I'm going to do now, this one is all set, ready to be filed. So I'll give that a file up and I'll file this one as well. And I will be back when I am ready to top coat. Okay, right. I am all filed up and I've given both of these nails a little birth. 
So I'm going to come in on this nail now with my No Wipe Shiny Top Coat. I'm going to top coat the whole nail. And while I'm at it, while I'm at it, I'm going to top coat this nail as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Sam, I know what I'm doing. That's what we are. Keep which way Sorry. round we're doing it. Who's the professional nail tech here, Sam? Oh, yes, that would be me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right, so shiny top coat on this. And that can go, both of those can go into the lamp for a full cure, please, Sam. So I'm going to be doing the bauble in matte top coats. Off but me, my white gel paint, which I threw on the floor earlier on. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Um, and I also oh, need, that? yep. And I'm also, no, I'm not using that one. Not frosty, titanium. I'm going to be using that for a little bit of 3D work. So, let's do, let's do the... We'll do the bauble nail first. Okay. So I'm going to be using the gel art brush. Looks like this. I do like this brush. It's a really, really good brush. So velvet matte top coat. I'm just going to blob some of that on the back of my nail. So using the gel art brush. I'm just going to cover the frosty acrylic with the matte top coat. I really struggle thinking and speaking at the same time. So make sure you've definitely got that covered. You don't want any shiny parts coming through. Make sure it's all covered. And that can go in for a full cure, please, Sam. So what I'm going to do with that now, so it will make the glitter look matte. So I'm going to paint around it. So what brush can I use for that? Don't want the Zotso, though. No. Where's my... Oh, it's down here. I used it earlier on, didn't I? 10 mil liner. Maybe that one's too long. That one's too short. Oh, my 8mm liner. That's the one I want. Perfect. Yeah, so the Nelkme 8mm liner. Oh, look at that. Frosty is all frosty. <laughs> See what I did there? It looks, See what I did there? it looks like... It looks beautiful, Sam. It looks like my mummy's opals. Opals, yes. Right, so I'm using the Tack Free in white and my 8mm liner brush and I'm just going to load my brush up and I'm basically just going to draw around this bauble so this is why I was saying don't worry if you haven't got neat edges because you can create your neat edges at this point panicking then that, that I didn't have my glasses on but they are on my face so it's all good. this is where the concentration face comes out gotta focus just turn your hand that way a bit for me I'm forever moving my clients about Oh, I really like that frosty. It looks so nice. Okay, pop that in the lamp just for 10 seconds. Just give that a flash cure for me. I'll do my love. Okay. That's 10 seconds. Fabulous. 
and then I'm going to do a bit of a bow at the top. Just a nice simple bow for this one because we're doing an over the top bow on the other nail. Okay. Right, pop that in for a full cure, please, Sam. You're welcome. Um, right, so 3D, 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 3D. Give that brush a good clean. Right, so okay. that is that one done. I love that old frosty. I really like that. It is. I love it. Really like you that, especially really. with the rest of the nail shiny. Mm. That looks good. Okay, right, so we are turning this one into a present. So I'm going to use my 10mm liner, um, same again with the white tack free artisan paint, I'm just going to load my brush up and I'm just going to do a line down but I'm going to make sure it's slightly off centre, line all the way down like so. And then all the way across as well. Oh, I've got some floof in there. It's okay, it's it's masked quite well. Is that your tummy rumbling, Sam? I don't know why, because I'm not hungry. You've got any stretch of imagination after that Big Mac I ate earlier on. I think your stomach is telling you something otherwise. Right. Yes, that's the immutable power of gluten. Oh, gluten intolerance. So I'm just going to thicken up these ends where it gets to the end on all four. Like so, okay, that can go in for a full cure, please, Sam, and that does need a full cure. Okay, right, so that's had a full cure. Right, I need my, yes, lids on products, Lisa, lids on products. I'm just about to do it for you. Yeah. Knock stuff off. Right, so I'm going to do a 3D acrylic bow on this one. Quite an elaborate bow. So I need my monomer. 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 And I'm using titanium for this and the Nail Come 3D brush. Which, oh my God, stop doing that. It's my cuticle brush. It doesn't quite fit in there. Right, okay, so I am slightly out of practice with these bows, you know, we've been in lockdown, we are now in lockdown 2.0, it's been a little while since I've done one of these bows, so I'm going to give it the illusion that we're looking at it from the side, so my left part of the bow is going to be bigger than my right, so it looks like it's it's curling around this present, so I'm going to start with my right hand side, right hand side first, my bead down. I think I need a little bit bigger than that. To whip that off and we'll go again. It's better. Pop my bead down. And that is going to settle and it's probably going to start slipping about because we're on a shiny top coat. So just watch it. I'm going to bring this into a point in the middle and really start forming this shape so we've got the center of the bow in the middle here I want it quite square on the edges right so as this starts to set up I get my brush into a point and I'm going to cut into the top of this section and lift up and out. So I'm going to expose a bit of that blue in there. Like that makes you get right in this corner. Pull up and out and then you can squash that back down and then pull it back up and out again. That's just going to help get it 
nicely defined and then again like a blade just under that I'm going to cut in and just create a little crease in here I want this bottom section really nice and defined so I'm going to push under there and I'm just going to pull this out in this direction a little bit and you've got a fair little bit of time to really tweak this and make sure that you're happy up until now now it's set and then I can do no more but I'm happy with that so now my other half is going to come up around here so like I said because I want this side a little bit more prominent I am going to get a bigger bead very very tricky getting two halves of the bow perfect in size anyway so this is always a great cheat tactic to give the illusion so again bringing that into a point start forming your shape get your brush into a blade and we're just going to start cutting into here Really pull that up and out. And then I'm going to sweep it in nice and gently doing this bit so you don't cut into it too deep. Nice and defined along the bottom. Each bow is going to look completely different, so just roll with it, just own it. As long as you've got this open section up at the top, it's going to look okay. How's that looking, Sam? Do you like your Sam. present? This is your Christmas present. I love my Christmas <laughs> present. <laughs> Hope you're not expecting much more. Right, so ribbons. Ribbons can be a nightmare to master. So I'm going to make I'm going to try and make this as simple for you as possible. I'll try. Right, so medium-ish size bead. Connect that up at the top and then I'm going to start pulling this down. But I want to keep it relatively thin especially as we get to the end. Relatively thin. Right, so once this starts to set, you need to keep your brush at this sort of angle and we're just going to come in and push from the left, squash, push from the right, squash, and then back in from the left. And then we can come in again and I'm going to keep going over this and just adding that definition and creating like an S-curve in there looks looks quite easy <laughs> let me know how you get on with this because honestly it took me months i remember doing some 3d training and everybody on the course just bloody belted out these perfect ribbons i could not do it i could not do it, it took me ages ages and, and I mean, i'll be honest you know i'm still not 100 percent happy with my ribbons i'm still not 100 percent happy with my bows but you know we've got to keep practicing, keep keep going until we're happy. And let's be honest, we're never bloody happy, are we? Don't stress too much about what's going on in this middle section at the minute because we're going to do something to tie all that together. Huh? Tie all that together. Get it, ribbon. Tie it all together. <laughs> See what I did there, Sam? Oh, I certainly did. Okay, so again, I'm going to push this out. You can push it back in, flowing with the other one if you want. And then in, oh, in fact, I'm quite happy with that as it is, just the two. Sometimes I'll push twice, sometimes I'll push three times. Just depends. Oh, I like there that. There we go. Right, so this metal section here, I just want a teeny, teeny, teeny blob of acrylic. Not too big, just a little blob. I'm going to let that start to set on the brush because I don't want it running everywhere. Then I'm going to place that on. I'm going to take it up and completely wrap this bow 
with that bead and tuck it under top and bottom like so and just as it's about to set I'm going to get my brush back into its blade like that and just down the center of that just give it a little crease not even sure if you'll pick that up on camera I think you can I'm gonna make it look like a little bum crack that's all you're gonna see now every time you look down at your nails isn't it a teeny tiny little bum crack on your ribbon so there we go that is your 3d bow so lids on products and I'm gonna pop a splash of cuticle oil let's go for Let's go for melon. That one's right. Melon, yes, I do need to add a little bit of cuticle oil on that one. You are correct, Sam. Blob on there. Blob on there. Careful not to get your cuticle oil on the matte top coat that we've added on this nail because it will make it shiny. And then it just negates the point of having matte top coat. Fabulous! Love them. There you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to drop us a little like, comment and subscribe. There's my man on back. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I guess we'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.